Arriving at Blue Young, Blue Young Station. Change here for line two. Doors will open on the right. Line one, four farm. Hey folks, it is Saturday, March 23rd. The time is 4.18 p.m. and I am here at Bloor Young Station, or at least I was at Bloor Young Station. I'm gonna head out to Bloor Street West, just up ahead here. And I noticed I have my camera stuck in tilt lock mode. And we have emerged outside. And that is a look east along Blur Street East. And let me see if I can just fix my camera here. There we go. And for this one, I'll be walking west along Bloor Street. Starting from Young and Bloor here and making my way through three neighborhoods all the way to Christie Station. As you can see, we had ourselves a bit of a snowfall yesterday, in fact, I think it was the most it snowed any day all year. I, I, gotta go. I think at Pearson Airport they recorded 11.6 centimeters of snow. And this is Young and Bloor. And a look up at the one. And when all is said and done, I think that'll be 328 meters high. Making it one of the two tallest towers in the entire country. And it looks south down Young Street. But we are heading first through the Yorkville neighborhood and then it will be through the annex and then into Koreatown. I think I'll just stick to the south side of Bloor Street for this one. And as I have crossed over to the west side of Young, this is now Bloor Street West. And this one will be about 2.7 kilometers. There's where a former H&M was. 
Temperature wise, it's not that bad. It's about one degree. <laughs> Certainly a lot of slush and muck on the sidewalks, though. Way too soft. There's a high-end Canadian department store, Holt Renfrew. This section of Blair Street between Young and Avenue up ahead has been dubbed the Mink Mile. So there's a number of high-end retailers along the stretch. the Toronto location of Italy. To the north of here is Yorkville Village. I passed through there on a live stream I did on Thursday evening. Steel drums are a familiar soundtrack along this stretch of Blur Street. I guess some people <laughs> don't know how to share the sidewalk. There's Holt Renfrew for men next to Air Maze. There's a lot of retailers I normally see in airports. I don't think I've ever purchased anything from any of these retailers. Not even that winners across the street. Thank <laughs> you. 
someone shouting off in the distance. So Tiffany and Louis Vuitton. This used to be a flagship Club Monaco location. It looks like Brooks Brothers has moved in. It's good to see that space being utilized. And this is Queen's Park coming up on the left. Avenue Road to the right, which is the north side. And just across the street there is the Royal Ontario Museum. And that dates back to 1912. And that overhanging crystal edition was added in 2007. That cost over $200 million. And Queen's Park, the Provincial Legislative Assembly, is just to the south of here. There's a view of CN Tower, or the CN Tower. guy doing all the yelling is <laughs> just on that side of the street. Oh, my camera is starting to go haywire there. Looks like there's some work being done to the ROM. I guess you have to use the Queen's Park side entrance. I forgot to point out back at Bay and Bloor there is Bay Station. And coming up will be St. George Station, and then we'll be walking past Spadina, then Bathurst, and finishing up in front of Christie. So this walk will span six subway stops. There's the Philosopher's Walk on the left. It'll lead you down through the University of Toronto St. George campus. There's the Royal Conservatory of Music on the left. There's the Varsity Arena on the left, joined to Varsity Stadium. I was watching a YouTube video, I think, on a channel called Wide World of Stadiums that featured various stadiums in Toronto. It's kind of a neat video, and they took a look at both of these properties. There's Bedford Road, you'll find an entrance to St. George Station right there. Water, 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 water
So the annex neighborhood here runs between Queens Park, where the museum was, and Bathurst Street. That would be the western end of downtown. Guy was wearing Crocs and sandals. That's an interesting footwear choice in this. drier part of the sidewalk. And this is St. George Street here. And straight ahead is the Bata Shoe Museum. I believe that dates back to 1995. I've only ever been there once. I think that was in the late 90s. It will give you free admission on your birthday though. Enter St. George Station again. Just to the north of here. <laughs> that uh, is a Canadian brand of shoe. It used to be a lot more prominent. You'd find a location in pretty much every major shopping mall. It's not really the case anymore. And just up here on the left is where I'm going to dinner tonight. Gayubi All-You-Can-Eat Japanese Grill. They don't do reservations, but you can join a wait list. And for my money, that's the best all-you-can-eat barbecue of its kind in the city. And the way the wait list works is you have to use Yelp and you choose the targeted time you'd like to eat and put in your group size and they will text you and slot you in on the wait list so it'll roughly align with the time that you chose it doesn't always work out sometimes it's a little early sometimes it's a little late I think it's more efficient from their point of view, especially since it's always busy versus traditional reservations where they might have a table sitting empty for half an hour or an hour just because there's a pending reservation. is Spadina. That is UTS. <laughs> a University of Toronto private high school, if I'm not mistaken. That building there is a student residence for the university. 
And that's Madison Avenue. I think this entire block is doomed. A lot of businesses have left and not been replaced. The second cup left. As well as the Pizza Pizza. And there used to be a second cup in the Miles Nadal Jewish Center across the street. And that one also left. Spadina Station is just to the north of here, north of Bloor. It's Spadina Road, but to the south, it is Spadina Avenue. There's a Metro supermarket at the left, but they're the property owner. They're going to be redeveloping this into a condo. So this neighborhood's about to lose their only major supermarket. I think there are plans to put a new supermarket in the base of that new development. be the most vibrant and busiest stretch of the annex. A Korean restaurant has moved in. There is BMV Books. And where the infamous Brunswick House used to be, which later became a Rexall. It was a college bar that became a Rexall pharmacy, and that didn't work out, so now it's Brian Baruti, one of the biggest catastrophes. In Valley Village, that man was saying <laughs> Brian Baruti was one of the biggest catastrophes in Canadian history. He's a former prime minister who passed away recently. There's Future. We got some excellent snacks in that place.
these sidewalks remind me a lot of walking around Montreal. It's not too many days in Toronto when they're this bad. Kind of a miracle that my feet have remained dry. There's the legendary Lee's Palace, a live music venue. Up at the top is the Dance Cave. I guess I should be walking on that side of the street. Look how nice and dry the sidewalks are. Side is shielded from the sun. It's definitely made a big difference. There's the Hot Dog Cinema, originally a movie theater that dates back to, I think, 1945. <laughs> Wow, it is night and day how much better the sidewalks are over there. And here we are at the edge of downtown and the edge of the annex. This is Bathurst Street. Yeah. There's where the legendary Honest Ed's used to be, a large discount <laughs> retailer. That closed back in 2016 to make way for this new residential development. These are mostly rental apartments. Honest Ed's opened, I think, in the 1940s. It's been a very long time since the sidewalk has been opened up like this. And this is Koreatown. Bathurst Station was back there at Bathurst Street. So look into Mervish Village. One of my favorite bars used to be there, the Victory Cafe. That got closed down due to the redevelopment. We have a bone dry sidewalk on the north side of the street and this on this side. Here's where you can get some delicious Korean cheese duck galbi at Hankook. Oh. 
，这个。Is Palmerston. Korean Village Restaurant. It's quite iconic in this neighborhood. And that looks pretty new, that Bone Soup Malatong Restaurant. This is the traditional Koreatown. A lot of people refer to Willowdale as a second Koreatown. That's the area between Young and Shepherd and Young and Finch. Sitting Nine Tails Cafe. But speaking of excellent barbecue, Dalgon Day over there. Serves up some excellent Korean barbecue. And we're at Manning Avenue, and there's PAT, a large Korean supermarket. This is an old movie theater on the left turned rock climbing gym. Okay, I was thinking of the other place, so I can't vote for how good this is. There is what was the legendary Clinton's bar. It still says Clinton's on it, but they have changed it to bar 693. During the pandemic, there was an ownership change. I'm not a fan of the change at all. It used to be one of our regular spots. Shinjan Topoki and Pocha coming soon. There's just an endless amount of excellent Korean eateries on this stretch of Bloor. We made it to Christie Street. Christie Street on the north, and Grace Street on the south side. The 
Looks like I'm not gonna catch this light change. So I'm finishing at Christie Station. We'll just finish in Christie Pitts Park. Not sure how good the sledding will be today. And after that, or after this, <laughs> rather, I think I'm going to take a walk through Harvard Village and record that. So this is Christy Pitts here, named after the sand pit that used to exist in this spot. Also famously, there were riots here. That's an odd spot for a food delivery courier. set up and I was going to go stand there and finish up but this will do. Now this hill is not in great shape. Good enough that it worked. And hey look, a snowman. And on that note, I don't know what's going on with its face, but <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below if you wish to support what I do. There's links to my Patreon and YouTube channel membership down in the description. I have an Instagram account at Johnny Strides. And there is a super thanks button appearing below the video if you wish to say thanks that way. Anywho, I'm going to wind this one down and fire up the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. Yoink.